Brad, we are back, baby. The weekend is over. The fun has just begun. Syracuse land getting pretty hot and heavy in terms of uh, football season ramping up. Some players named to a certain list let out by Athlon Sports. It's pretty exciting, Klein. Yeah, hey, Syracuse football needs all the preseason hype it can get because sooner rather than later, that hype is going to materialize into disappointment. So enjoy it while it lasts. Some players get disrespected. Some players get over-respected. We'll tell you who's who. It's all on Locked On Syracuse, and it's right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Bonaparte and Brad Klein with you here on Locked on Syracuse. I just got back from Syracuse. I was on the hill. I was in the Salt City to see Paul McCartney inside the JMA Wireless Dome. Uh, Let me know on Twitter or anywhere else if you were there as well what a concert it was. Brad, I know you wish you were there, but uh, we felt your spirit. Yeah, you sent me the videos, and I appreciate the thought, but it really just made me more jealous. I was pressing it out, too. Until the last day, I was trying to think, okay, well, if I bought a plane ticket now and I scalped <laughs> something on the way, I mean, it's probably like $1,000 to do it. And it's a lot of locked on podcasts. I don't think I can swim, but <laughs> uh, I'm very jealous. Well, it was a great concert, uh, and it was great to be back in Syracuse for another time. So uh, until maybe the TBT or just TBT, yep. until I'm back. Uh, but Brad, on to more pressing matters, Athlon Sports released a list in which it named a few players on Syracuse's roster to one through four all ACC teams. One through four seems kind of like a weird number to me. I feel like it's always one through three, but they went for four. Um, and there are some names on here that you would expect uh, and some that maybe you wouldn't. But uh, we'll start with the offense, then we'll go to defense slash special teams. Uh, Obviously, Sean Tucker's on there. He's first team. If you don't really think he's first team all ACC, what are you doing? Um, Yeah, it just it makes no sense if you don't think that. So, uh, yeah, obviously, Tucker's there. And then how about one of his uh, big meaty men? in the trenches that blocks for Matthew Bergeron makes an appearance. Some misconstructions about Brad's feelings towards Matthew Bergeron have been dealt with. And Oh, by the way, I got on a tangent about Paul McCartney. I totally forgot to thank you for making locked on Syracuse. Your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Uh, Sean Tucker touchdowns are free and available wherever you get your podcast too. Uh, Thanks to Matthew Bergeron who makes it on to the second team on this list. Now, Do you think that Matthew Bergeron is the second, is one of the, I guess, what does that make him? Like, this uh, in terms of offensive linemen, he's not the second best offensive line because there's five of them, of course, in the line. So is he like the sixth best offensive lineman in the ECC, according to this list? No, no, it's got to go by position, so it would make him. So he's tackled, so he's like the second or fourth best tackle or second best left tackle. No, yeah, I guess it would probably be third or fourth best tackle. I don't don't imagine they, they do it by side of, of the of the football but uh, regardless so he's in the second best pair there. of tackles obviously it helps that i kim Aquanu is not playing college football anymore the nc State that guy's a beast monster and Icky, so man. yeah he's great and i'll never forget when uh when syracuse played nc state and he was lining up as a tight end and people were losing their mind just waiting for him to get the ball i think they threw it to him once he didn't catch it was a bad throw or something like that but He's just an athlete and a refrigerator when he wants to be, and he's great. So now he's playing pro ball, and that opens up a bit of a void in the ACC when it comes to tackles, and Bergeron deserves it, right? And we keep on saying this about Bergeron, a guy that's been playing the position at a pretty high level for a very long time, and this kind of feels like the opportunity, the year, for him to truly blossom. And this is kind of his NFL prove-it year, you would think. Yeah, of course it is, um, because all the eyes are kind of on him now, especially with service gone. He's kind of the man on the offensive line. 
Here's a question I kind of just thought up. How much worse is Sean Tucker statistically if Matthew Bergeron isn't there? Syracuse's offensive line gets like a lot of flack, but I actually think it's way better than people give it credit. Uh, and Matthew Bergeron's one of the reasons for that. If he isn't there, I actually think it's putrid. So how much worse is Sean Tucker if Matthew Bergeron doesn't exist? Obviously, Bergeron as a left tackle might be a little bit more important in the pass protection realm. Sean Tucker sure. often running between the tackles. But what makes Tucker so great is that he doesn't go down on first contact. And Dino Babers has been extremely vocal about that. The difference between the 44s and Tucker and everyone else is that they do not go down on first contact. So I understand, yeah, a good blocker is going to help a running back. Sure, not disputing that but I still think we'd be talking about how good Sean Tucker is. Maybe we'd actually be talking a little bit more about how good he is if he didn't have as much protection because he'd have to do a little bit more. And the way he's been playing throughout his young college career, I have no doubt that he'd still be successful. No, he'd totally still be successful. And obviously, like, every play isn't to uh, Matthew Bergeron. Uh, and like you said, like, he's a lot of about pass protection as well. But... I do think that he adds a lot to the line in terms of the run game, too. Um, this is a guy that has the ability to just put guys on their backs. So Syracuse is going to take advantage of that a lot. Also, he's got the athleticism to kind of run down the field and, and catch up with guys. So on a screen, like he's incredibly valuable as well. And you're going to see him out there. So I like him there, too. Think about Bergeron, and it's a total cliche, but you always hear the best abil ability is availability, right? And think about the offensive line for Syracuse, whether you think it's the worst offensive line in Power 5 or an underrated offensive line in Power 5, like you seem to think it is. You can't disagree with the offensive line has been a jigsaw puzzle for the past few years. Guys have been out. Guys have been hurt. Guys have been coming back for fifth years, and you're moving guys around. And Carlos Vettorello was not recruited to be your center. He just was not. Aaron Service was playing center and left tackle. Unbelievable, right? And you got guys like Josh Ilo is supposed to redshirt. He comes in and is a crucial part. That's good news for Syracuse. They kind of got bailed out by him with him last year. So the one common denominator in the offensive line has been Matthew Bergeron, and that's going to count for something, and I think it's ref reflected right now in what Athlon's putting out. Yeah, um, and the other question that kind of springs to mind with Bergeron being named this high is, does it reflect more on how good he is of a blocker that he's that high on the list, or is it that the ACC is kind of down? Like you mentioned, Icky's gone out of the league, and there are a couple other guys like Zion Johnson from BC who's no longer uh, in the conference. Does this reflect more on Syracuse having a guy that's really good or that the rest of the conference is kind of lacking? I think it's that Bergeron's pretty good. While I think both sides kind of factor in, I think Bergeron kind of demands that credit. Yeah, and it seems pretty obvious with the way he's positioned right now as a second teamer, according to Athlon. He'd be on this list, maybe not necessarily on the second team if Icky were still in the league. He'd still be on the list, right? So this is a guy who commands respect in the ACC by the edge rushers, and he handled a lot of really good pressure. I mean, you look at, okay, think about Ike Mekwanu is a top 10 pick in this past NFL draft. He's a first-rounder. Jermaine Johnson falls. He's supposed to go a little bit higher than he did in the low 20s to the Jets. He's an edge rusher from Florida State, neutralized against Syracuse. And why? Because Matthew Bergeron is there on the edge. And Jermaine Johnson was held to zero sacks against Syracuse. And if you want to give the credit to Garrett Trader for being an elusive dual-threat quarterback that can make a little bit of a, of a nice play when the protection falls apart, fine. But... You watch the tape and you see what Matthew Matthew Bergeron did against a first round pick. That is what we're talking about. And I actually think it's kind of hypocritical. You know, a lot of people think of Syracuse as DBUs. So they want to look at, and we do it too. You want to look at what Deuce Chestnut does against the prime wide receivers of the ACC. 
Garrett Williams has been successful against the prime Clemson receivers uh, in ACC play, for example, we don't look at Bergeron against those really good edge rushers as true. much as we should. Totally true. Um, and the ACC being kind of top heavy in the past, um, maybe doesn't have that to offer, like you said. Uh, so the Clemsons of the world and, and having a guy like Jermaine Johnson around uh, had it. But um, now they're all gone. Here's and the, here's uh, the thing, though. if you're Bergeron, and I, again, I'm not I'm not the biggest Bergeron fan in the world, but I'm certainly not the biggest Bergeron critic. The question you have to ask yourself if you're Matthew Bergeron is now you're a second team preseason all ACC tackle. Well, he'd probably do it in French, Brad. Sure. You have to do it in French. Uh, yeah, Quebecois. <laughs> you you got good. the wrong uh, locked on podcast member if you want a little bit of French. <laughs> no, Ben speaks none of it. Um, if you're Bergeron, you have to ask yourself. What else do I have to do to command respect, not only in the ACC, but on the national scene? I've got a fantastic tailback behind me, and I'm a, at least a part of that. I've got the preseason accolade. I've neutralized some NFL guys right now. What else do I have to do? And part of it is probably, let's be honest, school bias. No one wants to believe that a really good tackle is coming from Syracuse, and it it is not fair but think about the last first rounder i'm not saying bergeron's a first rounder think about the last first rounder i believe he was a first rounder to come justin off the Pugh? Line. yes justin Pugh. exactly didn't do extremely well at, at least at first kind of found his role in the nfl and he was great for the giants he was he was good for the giants and then the offensive line kind of imploded for new york and it was a bit of a nightmare he did his role and i think a lot of people started hating him uh, hating him on him hating him for it but i think a lot of people don't want to believe that a really good offensive lineman is coming from syracuse well for all the haters it is uh and you should probably bet on them uh and if you want to do that maybe you head to betonline.net it's your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info find all of the latest sports developments news and odds including this year's basketball championship matchup the nhl hockey conference finals Major League Baseball, and of course, all of the latest fighting news from MMA to UFC to boxing. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. And we have an important favor to ask you. We put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your chance to tell us what you like and what you don't about Locked On. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards to take our audience survey. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Again, thank you for your help. It's LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Man, Bones, I think I could have benefited from the Ticketmaster gift card to get to the concert, right? So (laughs) uh, that didn't happen, though. We're talking right now about Athlon Sports and what they've done and what they've mandated the preseason all ACC teams look like. We talk about the offensive side. Syracuse gets Sean Tucker to the first team. No surprise, no debate. Matthew Berger on the left tackle makes second team. And a couple of other guys getting some recognition here on defense. Deuce Chestnut, also a second teamer alongside Matthew Bergeron. And he's coming up on his true sophomore season at cornerback. This to me, I was a little scared when I saw this because this to me screams too much weight on his shoulders, early expectations, good true freshman year, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um. Okay, so here's what I've got about this. You've got both Deuce and you got Garrett Chestnut making Athlon Sports list. Uh, Deuce Wait, second team. Deuce Chestnut. What did I say? You said Garrett Chestnut. Did I really? I'm going Sounds crazy. Like made up two K Deuce play. Chestnut and Garrett Williams. That's what I meant. You knew what I meant. All right. <laughs> uh, Deuce is in the second team. Garrett, 
the fourth team. Now, this sparks debate among the Syracuse community, and we want to hear your thoughts. So let us know on Twitter what you think. Who's better? Is it Deuce or is Garrett? If you have the, if you're playing Clemson, who do you want guarding the number one receiver that the Tigers have? Do you want Deuce Chestnut or do you want Garrett Williams? I mean, I think that it's closer than people like to think. Um, if you go strictly by last year's statistics, I think a lot of people would pick Deuce, and that's maybe what Athlon Sports did. 43 tackles for Deuce, three picks, eight passes defended. For Williams, it was 52 tackles, zero interceptions, nine passes defended. So, obviously, the three picks for Deuce is, is more than zero. Um, but nine passes defended for Garrett's more than Darian had. Uh, and I think it's pretty close, but I would pick Garrett. It's just because fair. of I, yeah, I would pick Garrett too. It's not fair. I to, mean, experience. To stats. You got to look at experience and seniority, and it, you got to take those stats last year with a grain of salt because Williams was not a hundred percent. But for, I do think Deuce is really good. He's fantastic, and, and I do think that Deuce probably this time next year will be better than Garrett Williams. And I think they put not together now. one of the best one-two punches in terms of a secondary. Absolutely. across the ACC in terms of also being so young. Um, Garrett, obviously not. I mean, he's, he's NFL eligible at this point. Uh, but Deuce being that young and having a true freshman season like he did uh, kind of gives Syracuse something they haven't had. Uh, I mean, I guess they did have it in Trill, Afatu, yeah. and Andre. But yeah, that's, that's been the bread and butter of their defense. But, but okay, so we, EBU, we, agree, baby. we agree here. Deuce is a second teamer according to Athlon preseason. Garrett Williams is a fourth teamer, according to the same source. We agree that more or less we'd flip them in that Garrett is better than Deuce. I don't know if I'd flip them, but I'd put them on the, I'd put them, I'd first put them on the same plane before flipping them. All right, fine. But I'm here to tell you, I would take Garrett Williams over Deuce Chestnut. And it's not just in the vacuum of who do you have guarding the number one receiver. I just think right now, Garrett Williams is a better, better corner when healthy. Okay, that's fair. He was banged up a little bit last year. That's the thing is that the injuries were a problem. And before the internet just rains down upon me and potentially us, if you're getting aboard, is that what I'm saying is not that crazy if you think about it. Everyone's very excited about Deuce Chestnut, rightfully so. He is probably the most talented defensive player we've seen for Syracuse since definitely the Dino Babers era, just in terms of raw talent, right? Not not effectiveness, just raw talent. So I don't he's know. Only, he's only a true sophomore. That's the thing. He's a true sophomore. So I don't know if I'd say he's easily the best talent on defense. Trill was incredible Trill in terms was, of like a great incredible. athlete. That guy Absolutely. was awesome. He was. But but think about I mean, I'm just thinking about the interception that Chestnut had at the line of scrimmage last year. Remember that play? And and he He's a great have, player. He really is. He really Fantastic. is a great player. And he had a couple of learn on the fly moments and and that's okay because he's a true freshman going up against bigger taller stronger smarter receivers but he held his own and and that doesn't happen without that natural raw ability I think he's going to get there I think he just needs like 12 more games to surpass Garrett Williams but right now it's Williams okay um well let's talk about the linebackers on this list as well uh, Michael Jones, he makes it up there on first team with John Tucker, and I think that's entirely deservingly. Um, and then how about down third team? You get Stefan Thompson, which I'm, I'm really excited to see. Now, the question that sparks in my head here is Stefan Thompson. Love to see it. Where's Marlo Wax? <laughs> Where is I he? Get it. I get it. I get it. I do think that Stefan Thompson deserves to be on this list more than Marlo Wax. So they got it right in that sense. Yeah, I, I understand. Not even fourth team for Marlo? I understand. I'm not I'm not one hundred percent sure as to how he related to the rest of the ACC. So you always I have don't, to think about that. I don't think that Marlo Wax is that far below Stefan Thompson. I honestly put them on a very even scale. I think they're both fantastic linebackers and they kinda go hand in hand. Stefan Thompson is so good though, uh, on the blitz and, and just getting true. to the quarterback and he he just has that innate ability, and I feel like Marlo Wax is really good. They do play different roles in the defense, though. So if you're just drafting a team, uh, it depends on what you're looking for. Athlon going if you're going by the stats, you're going with Stephon Thompson because 
He really, he really, and remember the Florida State game? He got to the quarterback a lot, and he was he was great. Really, he was fantastic, and he he was the best linebacker that weekend. He just was. So that's that's the difference between I think Stephon Thompson and Marlo Wax is that when they are typically they're they're very even, but Stephon Thompson's ceiling is so much higher than Wax's. Uh, I don't know. I love Marlo Wax, man. I, I, like I think too. he's great. Not, they have the, they have such a similar build. Bad about Marlo Wax. Well, you did just say he has a lower ceiling, and I don't know if that's more, true. It's, it's more of a compliment to Stephon Thompson than an insult to Marlo Wax. But but okay. they're both extremely good. Yeah. Um, I would like to see Marlo here. I mean, I just think that that linebacking core deserves all the respect possible yeah. because it was just such a gr- – I mean, the entire defense last year surprised everybody, honestly. Um, did they have their bad week? Sure, like that Florida State game. That was not a good week. Um, did they have their tough moments? Sure, like the, the Wake Forest game inside the Dome that Syracuse absolutely should have won. But did they have great games, like against Clemson? I mean, they were fantastic. Held a Clemson team to 17 points. That was incredible. So – the linebacking core being a huge part of that deserves respect in that category. Uh, and Marlo Wax was a huge part of that respect. So put him up there. Get him in, at least in the fourth team. I get it. I get it. You want the respect. And I'm scrolling through what Athlon is is mandating now. And you look at, I mean, take the second team defense, for example, like Nick Jackson, Virginia, uh, as a linebacker. He, to me, really sticks out. And, and Servancier Dennis, that's the thing. So you think about a lot of the Syracuse fans only hear about these guys when they play Syracuse. Servancier Dennis for Pittsburgh makes second team. And when he was playing Syracuse, my goodness, I thought he was the best linebacker in the country. Just on that weekend, he could have been the way he played. So it just it's I understand Marlo Wax, you wanted them, and we're talking about the fourth team. I'm just a homer, I guess, in that respect. If you're a homer, that's fine. There's so many, so many talented linebackers. I don't think there's a linebacker in the conference that's better than Michael Jones, and clearly Athlon doesn't think that Dennis is better than Jones either. But you just think of a guy like Serv- I'm so in love with Servasier Dennis. <laughs> clearly, and I really, I really. Am. And and I, and you know the funny thing is you look at the first team and the the other linebackers next to Michael Jones, two NC State guys. Uh, two of the four are NC State. Peyton Wilson and Drake Thomas, and I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. They're too both the incredible. You can make the argument that NC State has a better linebacking core than Syracuse. You can make that argument easily. Sure. I mean, well, those two guys are out of this world, Peyton Wilson especially. Yeah. He's an animal. That guy's incredible. Uh, and when Syracuse plays NC State this year, you're going to know it. Uh, that's the name to know in terms Drake of Drake Thomas, too. And Thomas projects, I think, a little bit better than Michael Jones as far as an NFL build in the middle I, I've, I've just said this multiple times that Jones is just not playing the position that he will play in the NFL and he will be successful in the NFL too but that's uh that's neither here nor there all right we're going to take a a quick break here and talk a little bit about something I think is very important to me and that's built bar because if you don't love a chewy chocolatey brownie I can't help you what about a caramel brownie with caramel swirl on top so good the best part about Built Bars, the caramel brownie bars covered in 100% real chocolate, like for real. With Built, you don't have to sacrifice taste for health. You can have both. And all of Built Bars are made with collagen protein, which your body just absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. There are a million reasons that you should try Built Bars. But for now, let's just say that caramel brownie will rock your world. That's not an understatement. The offer. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, it's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right. Do you think that Trevor Pena is the <laughs> second best kick returner in the ACC? Because that's what this article says. Trevor Pena makes the second team uh, all special teams for the ACC. Yeah, he does. Uh, he had one return for a touchdown, I, I think, on a punt, if I'm not No, mistaken. he had zilch. He, he had, had nothing zero. last year. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. He was great me, on kick returns. I mean, he, he had averaged 25 yards. He was good. He was, he was very good. I feel shifty like. Shifty guy. Definitely a shifty guy. <laughs> 
it's funny because so much of that is just do you have the block and he didn't for a lot of it i mean remember how bad syracuse special teams was and it wasn't just the kicking obviously a lot of it was the kicking and the punting but it was the entire unit and it's one of the many reasons that dino babers went out to hire a special teams coordinator which they didn't have for no reason as a power five acc team didn't have a special that was teams bonkers man it's ridiculous so trevor pena gets it uh weird surprise probably doesn't deserve it i really like him but i'm that pulling for like trevor i'm happy for him i'm That's happy sick. for him but <laughs> isn't it crazy strange, that going into this year you can say that somebody thinks syracuse has the second best kick returner in the conference yeah i didn't think we'd be at that point i didn't i didn't think trevor pena was going to be that guy but he proved me wrong and we're not completely ditching trevor pena talk here as much as i love it but i will say fun fact athlon says that the fourth best kick returner in the acc do you want to guess who it is it's not a syracuse player obviously um no if you get i don't want to guess i owe you a bill i have no idea (laughs) i don't know who is it i have some in my bag uh jawar jordan what? Is no the, way. According to Athlon, the fourth best kick returner transferred Did, from this. Uh, this list Louisville. just lost all credibility. <laughs> what? That's insane. Yeah. yeah, Jawar Jordan from Louisville. I've seen that guy carry the ball. It ain't pretty. I'll tell you that yeah, much. It ain't great. pretty. It's not great. <laughs> oh my and God, that's him, terrible. And with him on the fourth team is Syracuse kicker Andre Schmidt, formerly the best kicker in the nation and now the fourth best kicker in the ACC. I will say this. This about perplexes Andre. me. All right, you can back me up on this. And I know because you're a friend, you will back me up on this. All right, Brad. My, in our, was it, when did he win the Lou Groza? It was our freshman year. Freshman year. Okay. So he wins the Lou Groza. And then one year goes by, our junior year, right? Two years ago, I had a theory about COVID year. Do you remember this? No. Maybe if I say it again, you'll jog your memory. My theory was that Andre Schmidt's actually not that good at kicking footballs. It's Mm -hmm. a secret that no one else knows besides Dino Babers. But all of the 40, 45, 50-yard field goals, when he won the Lou Groza, kicked by Sterling Hoffrichter, not by Andre Schmidt. He's kicking indoors, right? So there's that too. And then when he doesn't have a reliable punter to take those distance kicks, he's missing a lot of them. And then it trickles into his short game too. And he has a disastrous season last year. Halfway facetious, halfway honest. But I do think that I kind of called it on Andre Schmidt and the collapse from Lou Groza to fourth team preseason all ACC. Klein Stradamus over here, maybe. You're really not going to be honest because I know that I said this to you. I I don't remember you saying that. Maybe a little bit. I kind of kind of do remember it. The whole Hoffrichter part, I kind of do remember. The Hoffrichter thing was big. That was a big part of the theory. I do remember thinking it's kind of crazy that he would throw Hoffrichter out there for the longer kicks because he's supposed yeah. to have the best kicker in the nation. Um, but it just kind of seemed like Schmidt had the yips last year. Like he just couldn't hit the easy kicks. Um, the Clemson game was obviously the one that sticks out because Babers had the terrible clock management blunder where he had two options either call a timeout and go for it or wind the clock down and kick and he took a timeout and kicked which is just not one of those two options you pick option c um so yeah i mean some people say the laces were out or whatever they didn't hold right whatever um yeah he was bad last year i don't really understand how he gets this spot maybe like is it entirely based on his groza award from four years ago i think people are just counting on yeah i'll give it to that guy balls (laughs) <laughs> uh, bonkers. he didn't forget how can you forget he he totally totally remembers right he did have the walk off against liberty gotta give him he that did have that and and then it was all downhill from there so okay all that being said syracuse had the worst special teams in the acc last year and yet their kick returner and their kicker represented on the preseason all acc list hey hey the syracuse- punter's not there i'll tell you that much <laughs> yeah, the punter is not there any one of the james three williams four of them that we saw <laughs> no, uh, Colby Barker is playing more lacrosse right now. Anyway, hey, we appreciate you making Locked On Syracuse your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen Locked On NBA Big Board. Raphael Barlow, Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, Leif Thulin, friends of the pod, giving fans an in-depth look into the biggest prospects, the latest player rankings, and, of course, big boards. Follow Locked On NBA Big Board every day on the Odyssey app, YouTube, 
and wherever you get your podcast. We're back tomorrow. More Syracuse, all your daily Syracuse Orange fix right here on Locked on Syracuse. We'll catch you next time.